Let's walk through how to swap between Bitcoin and Ethereum using ThorSwap. These are native L1 swaps, so no wrapped assets, no centralized custodian, just real native Bitcoin in your own wallet swapped with real native Ethereum in your own wallet. So from ThorSwap at app.thorswap.finance, let's first connect some wallets. So we've got quite a few options here. And here you can see this diagram showing which wallets work with which chains on ThorSwap. So you do have a variety of options depending on what wallets you're already using or which ones you need to get. But just to highlight quickly, you could use both Bitcoin and Ethereum with XDeFi. You could use Ethereum with Wallet Connect. You could use Ethereum with MetaMask. You can connect Ledger directly with Bitcoin or with Ledger through XDeFi. You can also use Ethereum with Ledger with XDeFi, same for MetaMask. Or you could use a key store wallet, which will give you all the chains. So for this example, I'm going to be connecting my XDeFi wallet, and I'm going to just go ahead and only connect the Bitcoin and Ethereum chains and connect. You can check on your wallet and see that both chains are connected and your balances at your Bitcoin address and your balances at your Ethereum address. So first we just select our from asset. Let's do from our ETH. And for the to asset, we're going to do native Bitcoin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swap 0.25 ETH and I'll see the expected output here. And then you'll see the gas and fees required and you can see an extended breakdown here. So just a quick note on fees when using ThorSwap. Because you're dealing in native assets, you are paying native gas of the chains that you're actually using. So how high those fees are or how long the swap takes depends on the actual native blockchains that you're using. For example, ETH gas can get high at times, Bitcoin can be slow. So all of these things just depend on which actual real assets you are using. Also, I do not need anything other than the from asset to pay these fees. So I don't need to have any Bitcoin already in my wallet. I know I currently do have a little bit, but I actually don't need this. I just already happen to have this. I can have zero Bitcoin, and I also don't need to have any Rune, the native asset of ThorChain, or any Thor, the ThorSwap token. All I need is my from asset. You are paying gas for the ETH to go in and for the Bitcoin to go out, but the fee for the Bitcoin to go out is just going to be taken on its way back out to you. So you don't actually need to have that. It'll all happen for you invisibly. And then we click swap, see one more confirmation of all the details and click confirm. Now this transaction is being pushed to whichever wallet you are using and you'll have to confirm it there. In this case, I have XDeFi and I'll go ahead and confirm this. This is for the send in of the ETH. And then you'll see your pending swap, 0.25 ETH to 0.0164 BTC. Send ETH successful. I could track this on Etherscan. And I see that I am just waiting on the Bitcoin to come back out. I can also track this on Thor Yield for a more detailed breakdown. If you're doing a larger swap, you could be stuck for a bit in the ThorChain outbound queue, which is just a security feature. Larger swaps uh, get delayed for a little bit. So if you're running into that issue, that's likely why, and you'll find that on Thor Yield. So there we go, transaction successful. Took a little more than 30 seconds, just depending on ETH. And it says we've received our 0.016 Bitcoin, which we can see it is there. I already had 0.001, so it's all there. So now if we wanted to do this the other way around and swap some Bitcoin for Ethereum, the steps are essentially the same and are the same for really any swap on ThorSwap. So I can just click here to reverse these, or I could, of course, just choose whichever assets that I wanted to be swapping between. And again, I'll see the breakdown of the fees here, which does include the ETH gas fee for the outbound. So again, I would not need to actually have any ETH in this case, even though the fee is being paid in ETH. I just need to have the Bitcoin gas for the send of Bitcoin in, and then the rest will be taken on the back end. Now, one just quick little tip, and this is something dependent on Bitcoin itself and not ThorSwap in any way, but because I just did this swap, this Bitcoin is still going to be confirming because Bitcoin is quite slow, which means I can't actually send this Bitcoin out immediately. It can sometimes take 15, 20 minutes, really just depends, but you can see that by tracking your Bitcoin address on a block explorer, and you'll see that this unconfirmed received 
0.016. This is actually still waiting for confirmation on the Bitcoin blockchain. So I can't immediately send Bitcoin that I just received. So just in case you find yourself in that situation, that might be why. Typically, you probably wouldn't be swapping Bitcoin that you just received, but if you're sending things around, that might be an issue you run into. In this case, it would be an issue because I literally just swapped from ETH to Bitcoin just a second ago. So I'm going to wait until this shows confirmed. All right, after waiting a while, that has confirmed. So now let's head back and do our Bitcoin to ETH swap. So let's swap that 0 0.016 or so BTC that we got back to ETH see the fee breakdown in the total here and then the confirmation page now that BTC send is being pushed to our wallet to confirm so we'll see this BTC fee is just to send the Bitcoin in but the rest will be taken on the way back out for the ETH so confirm again the swap is pending can track the Bitcoin send on the a Bitcoin block Explorer waiting on this ETH to arrive, and we can also track the transaction here on Thor Yield. And because this is a Bitcoin send into the Thor chain vaults, this can take a bit. It depends on the speed of Bitcoin itself, which can take a while. So don't fret if it's been a bit. You can just track it here and wait for that to go through. And after some time, checking back, received our ETH. It is in our wallet. And so we've successfully swapped from ETH to BTC and BTC to ETH, all with our own non-custodial wallets and layer one native assets.